Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Trattoria. And in today's episode, we are taking a look at the After Dark DLC, the second half of our review of that particular DLC. In the previous episode, we actually did most of what this DLC has. We put together a nice bike network. We already have uh, bus roads. We, we took a look at those. We might do a little bit more with that today. We are, are definitely going to take a look at some of the, uh, the, the, the unique buildings that come with this, uh, or at least what it takes to unlock them, because some of the, the unlocks are pretty steep. Uh, and then we're going to look take a look at taxis and the cargo hub. Um, I do want to get our population to 60,000 fairly quickly, because one of the things that we are going to struggle with is getting to airports without a higher population. So that's going to be our very first thing that we focus on today. That'll give us another tile that we can unlock and we'll be able to get airports and then work a little bit more on the DLC. But first, using the power of YouTube, taking this today, we don't want this to, to change power issues uh, at night uh, as as per usual in City Skyline. So, uh, all right, we're back to daytime. What I'm going to do to get this thing to, to, to where we want for, from a population standpoint is to continue to build out this way and hopefully get our 4,000 population. The first thing I want to do though is we severed this road connection here and that's fine. That's no problem at all. But now that we have a bike network, I think it'd be really nice to make a bicycle connection there. So I'm going to pull this out just a bit and then we'll come here and what I'm going to do is turn on just the grid and this is going to be a problem. I'm going to eliminate this one. We have problems already with our uh, some of these windmills right here. So we're going to want to do something there. Wow. Issues with land value. That is interesting. We're going to need to look at that as well. That'll be a, a problem that we, if we don't take care of it, it will haunt us. So here we go. We're just going to come over here, pull this across, raise it up. Let's make sure we're only on one. And I want to get rid of everything now that I have grid on. I want to make sure we get this up and over. So we'll pop this up one more. Actually, why don't we take it there and then we'll turn our curve on and see if we can get it across. And it's just not high enough from that first section. So we're going to have to try again. So we'll go up two and now we'll try our curve again. We have angle on still. And you see, we can take it down two here. And now there we go. A nice bridge connection over and the goal here is we're gonna convert this to be a bike lane road and that'll be a really nice bike connection so this should see utilization fairly quickly I would imagine the other thing that we're gonna do is we only have one roadway connection here in light of getting rid of some of these windmills which we're gonna do uh, we're gonna get rid of at least what we got rid of that one at least we're going to make another roadway connection across and then continue our build across. We should turn on our all of our snap twos again. No reason not to. And interestingly, because of where the node is here, it's not going to let me make my connection where I want to. That's unfortunate. I am going to use a little bit of eminent domain in a way that is fairly unreasonable <laughs> and eliminate that connection there. What we'll do, I'm going to make a connection here, bring this up four, and use my curved road tool to make a nice smooth connection. We'll just finish out this bit of a grid here and try to come in at a 90. We'll need to use our freeform tool for that. There we go. And now we can continue our density up the road and then lower density behind. Now I do want to take a look at our sound because we were having some issues with noise and I think I can resolve most of this with landscaping so let's go ahead and landscape the heck out of this okay so this one is just so close there's nothing I'm ever gonna be able to do to make these people happy over here I am gonna relocate it back just a bit that should be enough to give me a little bit of a buffer now with my landscaping here basically I've tried to have a moderate amount of you know the larger sized landscaping uh, more of the medium size and then a whole bunch of the small 
That's a way, in my opinion, to keep it looking natural. And then you also get a variation of colors, which I think is really important when you want your landscaping to, to look realistic. You can see now it's just kind of a forest behind here. This is really interesting to me. I'm not sure what happened back here, but it looks like things leveled up a bit too far, just kind of on the balance over here. So we are gonna need to add something to resolve this. So a park is definitely necessary. We might even use some eminent domain to add in a larger park and then try to work it into this area. So I'm gonna add one here and that should resolve it the most part but we're losing population over here because of it. Let's take a look at our land value. It improved it right here. The other thing that we could do is we have this large park within here now, and this park, ah, that's the problem. For some reason, it looks like we lost our district. I don't know why. Our other parks are there, but this one disappeared. Call it Monument Circle. And I'm not sure if that is why. The other thing I'm noticing is it looks like some of our districts over here also disappeared. That is really frustrating. So for some reason, we've lost our districts over here. So that means that I will need to do a little bit of work to get this back to where it was. So over here, along this corridor, if we take a look at our land uses, maybe this is a good refresher anyway. We had a couple of residential or a couple of uh, districts right here simply dedicated to some of the louder uses. So we will build those right there and then we had tourism districts right here. Okay, so the way that we get those district policies is we come in here, we go ahead, we add a tourism specialization to this one and a leisure specialization to this one. Now the reason why I'm doing that is the noise won't impact these residential uses right here. They will if we have them too close. The tourism is not as loud as the leisure. So right here, it's kind of a donut and you can see this one residential property does not like this. So we're gonna dezone that one. We'll convert that to an office. In fact, that might've been a good way to go all the way along here, but that should help us out. And then for Monument Circle, I am curious. If we take a look at this, no visitors. So for some reason, these gates are not doing the trick. No one's going in there. <laughs> Hopefully replacing that gate does something. <laughs> but maybe we need to give people a reason to go in here. Because right now there's really not much, unless you're just trying to get through. And it's kind of expensive. So... Let's lower the ticket price and add a few things to this park to try to again boost up the value here and because of what this is I think gazebos and things of that nature are probably the most appropriate things to put here there's no magic bullet with these I'm just trying to make sure that they're spread out enough that um, you know spread out enough that it makes a, a bit of sense so I've added a few of those. I will add in some restrooms right near the front and an info booth, which I think would be pretty important in a park like this. You could also add a cafe by the other entrance and another restroom. So there we go. Now there's a reason to come in here. <laughs> so we'll see. And we've got a couple of visitors now. So that will help our land values around here. Everyone's happy and loves this. It's great and that will help us boost our population up. And it's going up slowly but surely, and we're getting some of our districts, or our, our, some of our buildings back in here as well, uh, which is really important to us if we want to uh, make this the tourism area that it is. We also had some tourism buildings down here, and it's gonna be important that we add those back in. So there we go. Now we have our Tourism specialization here. This will replace all of these buildings and uh, it'll give it a tourist flair. So very good. Very, very good. Looking good. All right. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is add on a bit over here. I think we're going to do that, but I'm going to save real quick so I don't lose these. 
Okay, so interestingly enough, I noticed that a DLC snuck its way into the build, so I took it out really quickly. And I'm wondering if that was part of the reason that we had our issues. So that has been resolved. <laughs> I think it might be the next DLC that's uh, coming in, and you might have noticed it if you were paying really close attention. So, if you didn't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say. But if you did notice which one it was, pop down in the comments and uh, drop it, drop it down. <laughs> Let everyone know. <laughs> so, either way, we're gonna continue, and what I'm gonna do is just work on extending this grid out. So I'm gonna come and curve this through, and I really wish that we would have had another connection down here. But we're just going to mirror what we did on the other side. So I'm going to come up here with this road, try to figure out where I was, and then come on up here. So now we can use our curved road tool and make a nice, perfect connection here. So this now should mirror what I did over here for the most part. The only difference is that I, I, I got a little bit closer over here. So we can pull this down and our road connection is definitely tighter. Actually, it mirrors it pretty well. So, maybe not the end of the world. So, what we're gonna do now, let's create our own street network over here. We're gonna do exactly what we did before and look at our terrain, because our terrain should dictate what our roads are doing. So, I'm gonna draw a couple of roads based on the terrain. And I know that this isn't much topography to work with, but it's enough that we should think about it if we want a natural looking roadway network. So that will be kind of our, our bounding road right there. And we'll use that to develop our street network and the curved road tool to make sure that we're getting nice, clean connections through there. We'll have just a straight line here and then come up. And there's, there's no perfect here. So don't worry about getting your roadway network to be absolutely perfect because there isn't one. Now, what we can do here, if we want to make some really interesting connections is use our guidelines to come up. Now, this is the perfect spacing to get maximum developable land. What we're going to do is just follow our terrain and make some connections using our guidelines. So I'm going to put in a, a fake connection here for the time being. I want to mirror this other connection, but I don't want it. I don't want to make that connection down here. So we'll get rid of that one. And you start to see that it, you end up with some really interesting patterns here. And we'll leave some more space back here in between these roads. And then make a few more connections just for the sake of connectivity. I don't love this road location so we'll come through the middle and again I'm just kind of freestyling it there's no there's no wrong or right answer here I just want block lengths to make to be a bit shorter and truth be told when developers are, are coming up with their roadway layouts uh, if if the city hasn't come up with one already developers are just trying to maximize their saleable land so it's not there's not nothing really special about some of these they're, they're following the terrain and maximizing how much land they can sell. So just like that, we try to stay off the beach, make a connection there, and the city's going to require that connectivity through there. So that's going to be an important thing for us. So, all right. Now we've at least got some work, area that we can work with. We're going to come through and increase or and, and add, our, uh, add our water pipes underneath our road where they belong. And there we go, that's coverage throughout this entire area. These windmills are still causing problems for us. It's really unfortunate, but I think it's gonna be a thing that we have to contend with until we eventually eliminate <laughs> most of them. So I'm gonna move this one just a little bit and see if we still bridge our connection. We do, barely, uh, but it's still causing problems for this one parcel over here. The solution might be to change the land use and have some commercial over here. And I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this area. Not even gonna mess around with it, just have a, a little shopping center district and mix in some other uses. That would make some sense over here. Give people a place to shop, give people a place to work. We'll have some density and then we'll taper it back. 
Now, I would have loved to have another pedestrian connection through here. I didn't add one. It's a bit of a shame because that's kind of a missed opportunity in my uh, in my estimation. Also going to take that one away. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> we'll come through here with some office uses. And that's because all of these uses down here are going to generate some noise. So if we can prevent issues with proper land use uh, management, then, then we're going to do that. The last thing we want to do is have to solve land use issues with transportation. This is a lot of single family, uh, truthfully. But, the, you know, it, it is realistic, even if it's not desirable all the time. We should look at our services, too, because over here we're going to have some issues. We can see that the coverage is not good. The way that I'm going to solve this is, again, we're going to react a little bit. We're going to have some larger city service buildings, not directly on this collector, but with direct access to it. And that will make sure that they can move in all directions. We don't want a divider in between there. And then the other thing that we're going to do is take a look at our schools. We want to make sure that there is school coverage over here. We didn't really do a very good job over here. So I'm going to add some back here. And that should give us coverage that reaches out. Add it over here as well. And then just to make sure we have park coverage, it's always good as you add these schools, why don't add parks as well? We will use a bit of eminent domain for that apparently. <laughs> so <laughs> the height of realism. And then as we add this, why not add just a little bit more as well? So we'll add in a large park right here. And if I could ever fit one of these in, I'm always happy, but they're difficult to fit in if you plan your roads beforehand. Uh, dog park. I mean, developers always like to throw people a dog park if they can. If they can get away with not maintaining it, that is. If the city will take it on. So we will toss that. And then let's add some plazas over near this, what will be a tourism district. So that's actually not a plaza. That's the Japanese garden. That seems to make some sense in an area with a lot of tourism. And then a plaza with trees, plaza with picnic benches. That makes sense as well. And as these are redeveloping, I'm going to add one over here as well. A little bit of eminent domain to make everyone happy. <laughs> so it's just a couple of things to liven things up. I, you know, the repetition of some of these buildings, I saw that in the comments. I agree. It stinks that there's so much repetition, but it is uh, kind of what we're dealing with with this DLC. There are a number of models added, but not so many that uh, you don't end up with some repetition. So hotel, hotel looks the same. This, uh, they level up to, to this. So it's, it's just one level. And that's why you don't end up with different uh, gradations of, of, of density. So a little unfortunate, but it's, you know, it is what it is. There's not much we can do to change it. So there we go. So this is going to continue to build out and I'm excited to see how this fills in. We have a strong industrial demand at this point and that's holding us back a bit. I'm going to see if we can expand this area a little bit to improve things. That said, I'm concerned that we are funneling a lot of traffic right here and we don't have a good solution at this point. We are at, you know, 80, 88, 89% traffic flow. So maybe it's not the end of the world, but I, I want to punch another collector through here at some point and that's likely going to convert this road come out here and meet up somewhere over here so i'm gonna i'm gonna start a plan for that so let's turn on all of our road guidelines and we're gonna start our road connection here what i'm doing is i want to make sure that this lines up well with our existing roadway network. So I'm following it. And then we can make our connections through here using our road guidelines. Now it's not mirroring it perfectly, which is frustrating, but it happens. So you've got to kind of play with it to, to try to get things to be just right. And that looks like it works. So it's just kind of playing around with your road guidelines to try to make sure that you're able to mirror exactly what you're doing. And sometimes that's just making sure that you're following the same road guideline you were before. 
Now, sometimes you'll see things like this in the real world where you're like, what, where is that road going? Why is it just stubbed in like that? Doesn't make any sense. That's because there's probably a plan for what this road will do in the future. Maybe it's just right away that's reserved. Uh, but when that occurs, you'll see things like this. And the community probably has a plan on what it wants to do in the future. So we are going to start that planning. And you'll see it. Clear as day. We're going to use some eminent domain here as well to make this happen. This was a very expensive project for the city, but one that is absolutely necessary. If the city wants to keep growing out in this direction, which it does, so we are going to do it. And now you can see how it's blending a bit into this area. And that was the goal all along, is to blend it in, make it fit. So we could eventually upgrade this road, give ourselves more capacity, same thing here. This would be a very expensive project that I don't know would happen in a million years, but you never know. It depends on the, the entity that is, that is working on it. If it's the Department of Transportation and they have the money, they're gonna do it. Uh, if it's the city, probably not enough money uh, to be able to take this sort of thing on. But we're gonna say it's the DOT, <laughs> they could do it. And there we go. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I probably should have paused that because we're having some sort of issue. All right, it, it cleaned up. So there's always a danger in doing that, but uh, I think I got away with one there. All right, I'm going to fill this in quickly and then we'll move on to our industrial area. And with the, these curved roads, it's, it's really convenient to be able to just go through and use our large brush to fill this in. Otherwise, it's it's really kind of a challenge to fill in some of those areas. So you can see that when we get this tile unlocked, we can try to make it fit through here. And I wanna make sure that whatever I do next with this district doesn't impede my ability to do things in the future. What I'm gonna do is I wanna butt this up against the highway, give a little bit of separation. Why don't we take our industrial road as well? No reason to overbuild these. We'll run this across and then I want to make a connection with that existing road so we'll switch over to our curved road tool and switch that along so we're gonna need a connection here somewhere to our collector road here we're gonna pause this for a moment because we're gonna make some significant changes here and send through another one of these collectors and because it's a game we're gonna take some liberties here it is not allowing us to make this connection because of the node location. No problem. We can fix that. We just need to, to destroy a few things. <laughs> so, and then we can curve this in. Nice connection there. And now we can add our collector through here. We are not going to save the rock most likely. Sorry, Biffa. Yep, we are gonna take that rock right out. <laughs> and uh, that'll be a, a necessary evil of what we're doing and then make that connection so that is very helpful we will save this oh we'll try to save this big rock here let's get this filled in again i'm going to use the paintbrush just a little bit easier with all of these roads they're a little bit off skew at this point and it's just going to make it easier for us to make this connection again this is still operating as a local road at this point so i'm just going to treat it as one and get rid of the signals that are preventing us from doing more and then over here, we're going to start on a grid, very basic, and we have saved our rock. <laughs> so <laughs> we have accomplished our goal and we're not maximizing our density here yet. So let's add one more road. That's about as, as good as we can do here. And we'll send this road down as well. Get rid of this one so we don't have too many roads. Now we can basically go hog wild zoning through here after we get our water pipes underneath here and that will help us quite a bit. The other thing, so one of the things that the, if you look at the, at the release notes for After Dark is they say that the Cargo Harbor actually helps your leisure and tourism districts, which I find curious and I'm curious if it actually works that way. So I want to see if once we put that in, we actually get a whole bunch of demand. I think I'm a, I'm a little dubious on that one. And now because I want this to be a part of the wood products district, I'm just going to extend that out around here. I'll use the highway as a guide 
and this collector and fill it in quickly. There we go. I'm even gonna pull it right up to this cargo train terminal. So we could fill in the rest of this now and I'm gonna do it. Might as well, we need the zoning. We'll need to use eminent domain in the future to, to punch these through. That is not the height of realism, but that's okay. It's a game and we will take some liberties. In fact, maybe I'll just stub some of these roads in. Well, I can stub in those ones. <laughs> that's about it. There we go. So that takes care of some of our industrial demand and now commercial is our big demand. But before we move on to all of that, I want to start on our cargo terminal. I got some big plans here, some really big plans. So what I want to do is I want to terrace this. We're going to have two walls here. So a lot of terraforming. So hopefully, hopefully you're interested in that. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this right up to here. So we're going to have our cargo terminal right here, but I want to move these water facilities right here. But I've got an idea and we're going to see if it's going to work or not. Turn on our snap twos, create a wall there. There we go. Nice and tight. And then we'll come through here and I want to come at a low level. Maybe this line right here, that thick line, and we'll make a shelf. I want this to be really close to sea level, as close as I can get it, basically. And you'll see what I'm thinking in just a moment. Okay, so for the most part, we've got this nice and level. I'm going to add a level pad up here as well, because I do want to add a road down to this. And then we're going to use our slope terrain tool. We'll come click here and try to give some reasonable distance to get up there. There we go. That's nice. That's very nice. Now I'm going to add in another key wall. You see, we've got that sloping up ever so gently. We'll extend this and it's going to give us problems here. I, I think that's, we can get it to be somewhat close and then there's going to be a gap. Now we could fill that in with rocks, maybe uh, doubtful, <laughs> but we could try and then maybe one big tree. <laughs> so now we've at least got something there and we could clean this up if we want. Come through and try to get this to, to line up nicely with what we've done already. Oh, and I dropped the tree. <laughs> we don't want to drop the tree. So there we go. That is nice. That is what I was hoping for. Let's pop on through here. We'll raise this up to try to make sure we're not going to get any water back here because that's going to be problematic for us. What I'm doing is I'm just really paying attention to my contours here. And you see that we're actually dropping down a little bit over here. Not a big deal. And once we move our water, that should help. So we're going to move this now. Let's get this nice and tight and give ourselves the ability to improve this down the line. Add some more if we need to. And I know it's not necessary, but I want to have a road back here because to me, it's totally unreasonable to have this sort of facility back here and have no access to it at all. There we go. That is nice. And now we'll add in some water pipes that make the connection and then follow our road. So we've got this extra set of pipes here. We'll get rid of these. No longer necessary. We'll also get rid of that power, that, that windmill in just a moment as well. There we go. This should do exactly what we wanted this to do. And we can get rid of this. And now look at how much land we've opened up. Just by organizing our utilities, making it look a little bit nicer. I like that. That looks really spectacular. And we've got a key wall back there because we created that before we added our second one. So I like the way that looks. We've got space to add more in the future. So our cargo terminal that we want to add, we should take a look at that. So it's actually our cargo hub and that is underneath the ships, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we do have a connection that we can make over here and it does come with a train connection. So we're going to want to do something with that. We also don't want it to be up too high, but not too low either. So I think that, that that's part of the reason that this is so important is to, to create this, this gradation here. So I'm going to select something in the middle. We're going to sink this down just a bit. We've got a bunch of soil to work with. So we're totally fine here. 
So let's pull this across, make it a bit wider and give ourselves some room to work. Now this is another one of those assets that if you build in a key wall, it will work with that key wall. And then if we have our snap twos on, we can treat it just like a road and make a nice connection there. There we go. So let's grab our seaport or our, our cargo hub. We've got a connection made, we're good. And look at how nice that looks. Really conforms well to this. We're gonna to wanna to do something here. We're gonna, if we make this connection, we're gonna send all of this traffic through a residential neighborhood. That is unacceptable. I also wanna clean this up a little bit. As you'd imagine, if this were actually being built, this would be a consideration. Lots of dredging to make this occur. So that said, I've got something planned for this side. We're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna pull this out over here. And I'm gonna actually back that up just a bit because we are gonna to need to make a train connection over here. So, a couple of things to consider here. More work with our terraforming. So we're gonna slope the terrain, pull this up over here, and I'm actually reconsidering this road. What I think we're gonna do is try to make a connection up here, meander that. So, let me add in a connection here. I wanna find a node, and then what we're gonna do is we'll click up here, click down here, slope our way on up. And now I'm gonna use my curved road tool and angle and road guidelines at the end to make our connection. Then the curved road tool to make our final connection. That is a nice connection. Now we do not need to prioritize this connection that we made here. We're gonna add that one, but I'm reconsidering and you should absolutely feel like you can do that. And that'll be a little bit of a hokey interchange or intersection there, but that'll work. We're gonna add in a stop sign here to prioritize that movement. And I'm gonna try to feather this out to, to improve the look of it. It's not gonna work, which is unfortunate, but not unexpected. I'll try to raise it up here. See if that does the trick. It does not. So we will landscape to hide our mistakes. <laughs> Cause that's what we do. There we go. So we've got some more work to do. Okay, this next part is where the magic's gonna happen. I'm really excited about this part because I think, I think you're gonna find it interesting. So we've got this train track that we need to make a connection. Ooh, 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 we're killing our city. What is going on? So we don't want that to be a thing. Hmm. Water sewage availability is low. So we actually need to extend this out a bit. So before we do anything, let's do that. So there we go. And it looked like our water availability was teetering on the edge too. And luckily, now that we've done this, we have the ability to just kind of add these on as we need them. And that should resolve all of our issues. Sewage, did we hook that up? We did, but it's flooding. <laughs> That should be a temporary issue. Yeah, it's slowly gonna resolve itself. That's the terraforming there. So things are looking up. And if we look over here, no more no more uh, poo water signs. So we're good. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm really excited about. We've gotta figure out how are we gonna get our cargo over here? So let's pop in over here. We'll look at our terrain. And I wanna pop underground. We need to come up with some way to get this line here over here. So what I think we're gonna do is add another train bridge. So let's pop over here, we'll come above ground. I wanna use real fine measurements. Bring this over here, pop that up three. That's what this one was. And then we'll bring this over. And now I'm gonna have just curved road on with the road guideline, which isn't really necessary. We'll bring this over the top, just over here and continue on. We'll use a bit of eminent domain. And then I wanna get this thing underground. Hmm. And I don't know that I love the angle that we came in at, so we're gonna try again. 
we'll curve this just a little bit more. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about how neat it would be to have this mirror what's happening over here. So that's what we're going to try to do. So I'm going to use my curved road tool and try to line this up. Now it's not giving me the guideline that I would hope for. So I'm going to pop this up three and then try to make the connection here. It's not going to be perfect. That's unfortunate. <laughs> so what we're going to do is just pull this up, pull this forward a little bit more. And I'll use my freeform tool so that I can mirror that just as just the so. And then we'll use actually we we'll use our freeform again so we can get that in one, two, three. Perfect. Look at that. So now I just need to find a way to make this connection across. So we'll back this up a little bit. Now if I turn off my road guidelines, I'm really hoping that I can just slide this up. Oh, it's not gonna work. Shoot. So those pillars are just in the way, which is one of the unfortunate things that can happen. So we're gonna need to give this another go. With rail, you're always, it's always something. So we'll again make our connection across here. And then it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but it's going to be pretty darn good. Curve our way here. So now we've got this bridge that comes along, and now I'm going to drop it underground right here. Now it doesn't look perfect yet, but I'm hoping that when I turn things, it will improve. And it did. You can see that it lined things up there. So now it's just a matter of getting it to our facility down here. And I want to get it very close to the edge of the map and we're going to do something that I think is going to work really well. So let's come over here. We'll find our terrain line that we're going to use. I, I like this. We're going to pull this over. And what I want to do is have this come out here. So we'll pop it up, but we've got to be really careful with this. And now we'll use the curved road tool to make our final connection. There we go. So there'll be a little bit of a bridge there, but not, not, not the end of the world. And now we've just got one final connection to make. We'll back that out, use our curved road tool, find our guideline and there a nice smooth connection. Now this will not allow us to grab cargo and bring it over to this facility, but we could exit or we could utilize this facility over here once we make our connection. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad thing to forget, so we should make that. There we go. Nice smooth connection. It could use this terminal here, or it could exit the city, or something could come in from there and, and come over here. So nice and clean. like the way that looks. So now we'll just come over here, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to slope this terrain a bit and run this parallel. And you see we've got some road guidelines from our underground facility. I like that. So we're going to parallel this. And then we already have a junction here, so why not just take advantage of that? And because it's a freight movement, we are going to try to make this a bit of a gentle curve. Hmm. I followed the road wrong road guideline, and as a result, had kind of a weird curve. So there we go. Here I'm going to back it out just a little bit because we're going to want to clean up our terrain with our slope terrain tool. So we see that we're up here. I'm going to flatten this out so it's easier for us to work with. And then select that here, slope our way up. Now it should be a piece of cake coming down here and making our connection. There we go. Look at that. Looking good. Uh, we are going to try to feather this out to make it look a little bit better. There we go. And we can't really do much about this side because it's out of bounds, but that's okay. And then over here, I am going to, whoops, not do that. <laughs> I wanted it to slope a bit. So we're going to just do our best to, 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 to make this a better, better spot. We're going to smooth this out up here as well a bit because we're going to develop some workforce housing up here. And that'll be our kind of the edge of our neighborhood. So let's give this some water. And our water pipes are, are very messy right now. We're going to pause this for a moment so we can get these fixed. And I'm going to cut across here. We'll say that that is an easement. And then we'll turn off our angle, make a nice connection up. 
and for redundancy, prepping for that Natural Disasters DLC. There we go. Now, we don't have power here, but we'll get there eventually. We're going to do a couple of things. So I want to look at our terrain again, because we are going to have a roadway connection here, close to this one. Back it out just a bit. We'll turn all of our snap twos back on. And this is going to be a residential neighborhood, kind of above here. So, and I want to keep this at approximately the same road guideline. We'll use our curved road tool here, grab our line, and make a nice connection. So this road is going to function as a collector or arterial. So we don't want to load all that much onto this road if we can at all avoid it. To, to make sure that we do not, I'm going to add another road very close over here. And then add a curved road here. And we're going to put a fence around here. We'll do the exact same thing on this end. Keep it within one tile and then curve around here. Over here, we are going to have it. We're going to add some roadway connectivity, which kind of deviates from what we did on the other side. But I think it's OK to do that. Actually, no, we'll, 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 we'll maintain what we were doing. This will not be a very large neighborhood, so I'm not overly concerned about it. It is. That's a cul-de-sac. <laughs> so not ideal. We, we could add one outlet here, but we're going to leave it just like this because we don't want to, we're going to prioritize our freight movement over anything else here, uh, which is not great, not a great look, but it certainly happens in some cases that uh, there are different priorities and uh, there are some winners and losers in those, in those prioritization processes. So let's go ahead. I'm going to use just the grid to put this fence here. And then with our curved, I'll just curved road tool, just pop up here and make all of our connections. Now we can throw on guidelines to make our final connection. There we go. And you see that we get a perfect fence all the way around here just by using that tool. What this is going to do is, interestingly, I thought it was going to maximize our density here. It did not, which is a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Doing the same thing over here. Weird. Uh, if you are playing a modded version of the game and you have the zoning to, uh, zoning tool set and you can change your zoning, you could just disable the zoning on here and that would you know accomplish the same thing as having the fences. But if you're playing on console or you're playing a vanilla build, this is the way to accomplish it. Add some fencing. And just to compensate for that, so that we at least have consistent zoning, even though it let me pop out in a couple places, I will minimize that. And then this road is strictly for the residential users, so I'm going to zone all up and down it without any concern. Now here we, let's see if there's anything else that we could add here. I don't think that there's much that we could do. Why don't we add some warehouses down here just for the look of them? Well, and we can, we can make sure that we're, we're storing some goods down here as well. And then we'll come around here and smooth this out a bit or create more of a wall rather and then just taper it in one spot that to me looks a lot better there we go we need to set what these are and i think we're just gonna store commercial goods in this in this area which to me makes a, a lot of sense in terms of what you would expect to see here now we could set this to import you know, certain types of, you know, let's say we didn't have an oil industry, we could import oil and store that here. And that would be a way to accomplish that as well. And then export that to some of our, uh, if we didn't have extractors, we could have the processing units then. And that's something that you might decide to do. That is, I've, I've made many industries that do not uh, have extractors and that's the way that you do it. And then here, we're gonna need some sort of power. We're gonna run this up here. Oh, actually we made a connection, so we won't worry about that. So this should start processing right away. We'll start to see some ships coming in. Then we could add some landscaping back here to add a bit of separation. 
Now I'm adding this row here because this would be very noisy and there would be a lot of light as well. So uh, this bit of a tree buffer here would, would help resolve some of that. Uh, this should be functioning. I do want to make sure and the way that we can do that is we can go and look at our traffic routes. Click on this. It is not showing anything, which is concerning to me. Because if you look at this, there are some train things happening here. All right, now we're seeing this route being used. And that was what I just wanted to make sure of. You see that there are freight vehicles coming here. We've got the train tracks working. We've got a vessel here. Beautiful. Coming right in. Perfect. That is exactly what we wanted. The other thing that we could do to clean this up just a little bit would be to get rid of this lumpy here. Let's, let's do that. Just gonna right mouse click, bring this back, and then use our soften terrain tool. Just soften this up a little bit. You might need to do it a couple of times and select multiple locations. So I'm just going up and down these terrain heights, right mouse clicking on the road, and left clicking as I, as I, as I soften this. And to me, that just gives it a bit more of a natural feel. Now you could just have the, the cut in the cliff side. That, that does happen too, but I like this. Uh, and it's all personal preference. So this neighborhood is now filled in. We are at 58,000, but we need to reach 60 to get to where we wanted to get. We're, get, we're having power issues. And it's, it's happening repeatedly. And that is going to be one of the things that holds us back. So we're going to need to think about that a little bit more. And what I think we're going to do to resolve that, I might add in nuclear power. Well, it doesn't really fit what we've been doing. That said, let's let's look at our terrain and see if there's another place that we could add in more power facilities out here. And this, if we look at our pollution, this is a polluting area. I'm okay. Maybe we'll, we will add in some more polluting uses out here. Let's add in a couple of power plants out here. At least out here, they'll have quick access to rail. So hopefully we won't end up with lots of issues there. So what I've done here is I've placed one power plant. I don't want that on this road here. That is an important road. But if I place it, I can turn it around and now it's focused on this local street. I'm going to add two of those right off the bat. These produce a you know, a decent amount of power, 120 megawatts, but it's not that it's not that much in the in the grand scheme of things when your city is rapidly expanding. So we're going to add two of those in, and now we've got plenty of uh, overhead for our power. So this should stop our our brownouts over here, and that's a huge benefit. Let's take a look at how this is filled in. Looking good, looking very good. I like what has happened over here. Monument Circle is leveled up to level three. And at this point, it's just visitors. It keeps leveling up, which fits. This area has improved again. We'll use some of our sloping tools to fix this. And we should take a look at some of our taxis at this point. So with taxis, you need a depot. And this is where all the taxis are going to originate. So you don't want to put this next to homes. If we take a look at this, it produces 40 noise pollution. Not a ton, but it's enough. And for what we're doing, I think that we could sneak this down here or if we wanted to, uh, or we could put it in our, in our industrial area, have it back here. Thing is, we're going to generate lots of trips from wherever this is. So, oh, water. So with that in mind, we want to make sure that we have a adequate access to our roadway networks. So I think that we're going to sneak this in down here. Maybe we'll even create a little bit of a home for it of its own. So I just created a node there so I could delete that. Otherwise, it, it would create a big mess for me. So adding that did the trick and you can see all of those taxis spawning from there. So it'll work right now as is. It'll keep doing the trick. Look at all of these taxis. They're 25 in use. That is what this produces. Now, if you want to, those are, those are just going to circulate around the city. If you want to have a place for a taxi to go when it's not busy, you can use one of these taxi stands. Now, taxis don't have a dramatic impact on your city. I will just put that right out there right now. Uh, but 
I do think that they're kind of neat. It, and to me, if you wanted a good place, maybe we could add it right here at Biffa's Rock Park. Add that in. And then let's go right ahead and fence around this. We'll need our angle. I actually, angle's not going to do the trick. We'll just eyeball this a bit. Turn angle on here. And come down. We'll overshoot it so that we can create that node and delete it. There we go. If we wanted to really jazz things up, we could have the most beautiful taxi stand ever. Add in some ornamental. Ornamental uh, trees of some kind. <laughs> there we go. And the funny thing is, we'll look at this, and I almost never see anything happening with these. <laughs> so I don't expect that we're going to see a ton of taxis queuing up here. Another good place to put these would be an airport. That said, we don't have an airport yet. We're about there. 60,000 at the end of this episode is where we will be able to place our first airport. Unfortunately, not the international, uh, but that is something that we can do. I do want to take a look. So I mentioned that we've unlocked a couple of things or that we had the ability to unlock a couple of you know, the different uh, uh, unique buildings. So the luxury hotels one, we have our fantastic found and then the driving range and the casino. So for the driving range, we need 5,000 squares of tourism. Uh, so we even, I mean, we built quite a bit. We are about a fifth of the way there. For a casino, we need 5,000 squares of leisure, which is a lot. And why don't we actually, so it's 5,000 of each. Let's just do a little bit of an experiment. So if we were to build right here, this is a 10 by 20 grid. So that's 20 squares or 200 squares right here of uh, zonable land. So if we wanted to, to, to meet our goals there, uh, it's 5,000 divided by 200. That's 25 blocks of this specialization. So that's a lot. I mean, you could certainly do it and we could come through here and just, uh, and this this is a strategy you could take. You could just come through here and build 25 blocks and try to get it to exist. Um, there's three blocks. So that's five. So we need to go five more blocks out. So this is how much you need to have of each of those districts to make it work. Obviously, this is a lot. Just to see if I can unlock it, we are going to create this mega district and change it. And sometimes, I mean, with some of the achievements that you have to unlock to be able to get some of these buildings, cheesing it is the best way to go and then don't save it. Uh, I mean, the Lazarus Plaza, for instance, you've got to kill your city to, to make it work. So you're either going to just unlock that and then reload in or, or whatnot. You know, you're not going to be able to achieve that. I mean, you could, I guess, theoretically achieve it, but it's, uh, I would look at that as being problematic. <laughs> I guess since it we're cheesing it, I'm not sure why I cared so much about keeping the water pipes under the road. I'm not going to get super specific with this district. Let's go ahead. We'll make this tourism and then zone the whole thing, get a power connection over there. And then we'll add in a plaza just to make our connection. So they start zoning over here. Now we should be able to pop right in here. So it's underneath this tourism and leisure. We got our zoo. But this one right here, you can see driving range is where we get our tourism. And you see it popping up real quick. And I'll make that connection. I just want to see how long this would take. So I'm going to let this go for just a moment. Okay, and we have reached Metropolis at 60,000, and we're still not done with this. But we let, Let's see what we unlocked. We got planes, airport, cargo airport, and one more tile, which is really important to us at this point. Now, I've been letting this run for a minute, and we're still not there. I think we're just going to leave this. Uh, now, the, I guess the important thing to recognize is that by adding this many tourism jobs, that's a ton of... I mean, of residential that we're going to need. So it's just not going to really work all that well. And it's it, there's the potential that this has a really significant impact on what happens in our city. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I think that we're going to keep this. I don't know that we're going to finish that today, 
but this will kind of be our cheese area. So I'll even name it that. Cheese area, we're gonna convert this and uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll do some things here. Uh, that said, we did unlock our airports and I wanna place one. Now, we are gonna bring the airports DLC into this after it releases. So I know that this is where our airports are gonna be. For the time being, I'm just going to get very, uh, I'll be very relaxed about this because it's not going to be something that uh, we need to worry about a ton until we get the next DLC. So we're absolutely going to cover that. The moment I have availability of, 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 to, to do that, we're going to do it. So I'm going to level this as best I can. It's an airport. It should be flat. You wouldn't expect there to be a any, any uh, elevation change in the runway. <laughs> so we're going to flatten this out. And then I'm going to take this and run this down. And then we're going to turn this. Actually, we're going to get as close as we can here with a nice straight road. And now I want to curve it. So we have our road guidelines. We'll turn those on. Come up here and turn this. I'm just using this as kind of the proxy because we're going to change something in just a moment. Run this through here and I'm going to loop around just a regular road. Bring this up. I'll bring that up 10. Come over 20. Drop this back down 10. This is not going to be extravagant. Here's our just a regular airport. Pop that right here. And then around the back, you're going to add a cargo airport. Now we're going to need to play with this one a bit to make it fit. And you see that we need to go about, I want these to butt up and we'll need to go down about another five tiles. And then I can make a nice connection here if I want to. And I think we're going to do that. Use our existing roads to our advantage. Nice connection there. And then uh, the reason why I said I was using this as a temporary road is you're going to convert this and we're going to send our monorail up this way. We have been saving that the entire time. So let's put that in place. And then just for our own reference, this is about where we want it to go. So it looks like two tiles up is where I want to center it if I can. So we're going to add two tiles of road here. Then we'll add our monorail and then just a regular and actually it could have been four. It looks like, hmm. Get rid of that. Go four. Interestingly, now it won't snap for me. So let's get rid of that. Try it again. And then we'll just go with a normal road for that last bit of connection there. So we're going to want to make our, our, our add a stop to our monorail. I'm going to just pull this one over here and then add new stops to either side of this route. And then we're going to need a power connection over here. I'm going to add in some leisure right here so people could swing by a bar or something after they get to their airport. Those will be low, low buildings. So to me, that fits well. And then we need power and water over here. So that's going to be a little more problematic without just throwing in a bunch of power lines, which is what we're going to do. Now this is not going to jump, so we're going to need to do it on both sides, unfortunately. And we could send another road over here if we wanted to, to give a bit of redundancy. Probably not the worst idea. Let's look at our terrain. We'll send this a little ways back. And last but not least, water pipes to get this area going. There we go. Now we've got both of our airports functioning. These are going to be replaced as soon as we get that new DLC in. Uh, we want to get rid of all of the trees through here. Obviously, you wouldn't want plain wings clipping. And we could do a lot to clean this up. And maybe we'll do that in the next one. Uh, but for the time being, I just wanted to get those placed and operational. So we will add those right there. There we go. Very good, no trees in the way. Maybe down here we could back things up. And we could certainly jazz this up by putting fences around it or things of that nature. But again, with the new DLC, I'm not gonna get overly concerned about, about what's happening here. I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work, but 
I know that uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to create our own airport. So we will reserve that for then. But we have this big space now that we can do that in. And uh, so interestingly, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look over here. It looks like we've almost filled all of that in. Lots of issues. But let's see if we've unlocked our driving range. Oh, no. Makes me wonder if I've miscounted. So this should actually, I built an extra block. So this should actually be 6,000 right here. So there is a lot of empty space in between those buildings apparently and a lot of vacancy. So it's just gonna take some time and look at this crazy traffic going through here. Part of that is it's funneling its way through but part of it is just it's coming through uh, to, to load these buildings up. Uh, this is gonna become a problem. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> but even with this, yeah, 77% because of all of the traffic coming through here. Um, so this is going to become a route that uh, would be in high demand. This will be deleted, but I do want to see if we can unlock some of these things. And you can see that even with cheesing it, it's just a really difficult task. Uh, I, I, I desperately dislike this. <laughs> so we'll see if that cleans things up a little bit. You can see this district so many workers that right here is 2500 jobs which is why our residential demand is through the roof right now and we've made a gigantic cul-de-sac but hopefully that uh prevents the traffic piling up that we've seen because <laughs> of the way the game operates so anyway i think we're gonna leave it here we've accomplished some interesting things we've developed this neighborhood over here we have this wonderful cargo hub We've got some traffic coming here too. We've got taxis. Ah, that's the one thing we didn't add over here is it would certainly make sense to add a taxi stand at the airport. And we could add a crossing there by changing our roads up a little bit. And now they could cross right here, to get across the road to get to the taxi stand. And the taxi could wait here. This would be the most logical spot for a taxi to queue, but it, I'm sure that they're not going to, and if we look over here, still none. I don't know where they're going, uh, but they're certainly not helping over here. <laughs> so, you know, that's uh, that's just part of the, the, the mechanics of the game. I, I look at taxis as being the most un underutilized or unhelpful form of mass transportation. It just doesn't do much in this game. I could add a million taxi depots and it's still not going to do much. So, just something to keep in mind. Uh, we do have some traffic here at the end of the world still in our cheese area not completely zoned up so not unlocked we'll leave this i'm sure this will unlock in the next one then we'll convert it over to a leisure district and then get rid of it because it's terrible uh but i hope that you've enjoyed this i hope that you've learned something and uh if you like this button please or if you like this video please hit the like button if you aren't sub subscribed please consider doing so and if you want to know when i release new videos hit that notification icon i'm going to leave you with a brief city tour and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.